Was Jesus crucified on a cross? No. The cross is one of Christendom's most cherished idols. Professed Christians believe they are honoring Christ by cherishing the cross, when in fact it is Nimrod they honor, because the cross was the symbol of the Babylonian god Tammuz, who has been identified with the Greek and Roman god Dionysus, or Bacchus, god of wine. And yes, poles have been used in pagan worship as well, but do Jehovah's Witnesses cherish the pole or stake? Do they make an image of it to which they pledge their allegiance or use it as an object of reverence? Do they put up stakes everywhere or use it to adorn just about everything in order to keep Jesus close to their minds? The cross can be found on churches, music, jewelries, books, furnishings, flags, banners, t-shirts, logos, at grave sites and roadside memorials, and even their bodies and is an integral part of their religious worship during Easter and Independence Day. Clearly, the Bible's admonition to walk by faith, not by sight, enters one ear of professed Christians and exits the next. There are four main arguments used to try and prove Jesus died on a cross. A common argument used is that Jehovah's Witnesses believed in the cross for many years. They even had the cross and crown symbol on their magazines, and now they no longer do. How can anyone trust their changing beliefs? Jehovah's Witnesses hold to the beliefs of the professed Christian world until they have reasons to believe otherwise. By searching the scriptures, they came to the realization that the cross as Jesus' execution device was not biblical, but rather a bad tradition. Knowledge brings with it responsibility. Thus, the cross and crown emblem, once cherished by the Bible students as a badge of identity, was deemed unnecessary and objectionable. Another argument is that Jesus died on a xylon or a tree, and tree is a synonym for cross. Tree and cross are not synonyms. Staros and xylon, which are the Greek names of Jesus' execution device, are synonyms. Like Staros, Xylon was simply an upright pale, pole, or stake. In the writings of Livy, a Roman historian of the 1st century BCE, crux means a mere stake. Cross is only a later meaning of crux. A single stake for impalement of a criminal was called in Latin crux simplex. This is a statue of the torment of Marcius, who was hung on a tree, Notice what the artist refers to as a tree, a pole or trunk of a tree, with its branches chopped off. A copy of this statue sits in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. This statue shed light on what the Greeks and Romans in Jesus' day and before called a staros or xylon. To say Jesus died on a device resembling a utility pole or on a cross made from a tree is adding to the word, God's servants are commanded not to add to the word, or God will add to them the plagues that are in his book. The text of the Bible is sufficient. Jesus died on a stake, a pole, so that the Jews might be freed from the curse of the law. A third argument is that Bible translations use the word cross, therefore Jesus died on a cross. Tradition, not the scriptures, says Jesus was crucified on a cross. Bible translators sometimes mistranslate words. Neither they nor their translations of the Bible are inspired. A comparison of two Bible translations, the King James Version and the Authorized Version with the Hebrew and Greek interlinear is proof of this fact. The word cross found in most Bible translations is a spurious substitution for the word staros, just as Easter is a spurious substitution for the word Passover. Another spurious, false substitution is the use of the word brass and bronze for copper. The serpent Moses lifted up in the wilderness was made of copper, not brass or bronze. Last but not least is John 20:25, 20, and the number of nails used in Jesus' hands. In publications produced by Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus is pictured impaled with a single nail through both hands and another nail piercing both feet. This is an artist's depiction. No one knows exactly how many nails were used to impale Jesus because the Bible does not say. This scripture does not prove the number of nails used in his hands. 
In the New World Translation published by Jehovah's Witnesses, it states, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and stick my finger into the print of the nails and stick my hand into his side, I will never believe it. Another way of saying this is, unless I see in his hands the nail prints and stick my finger into the nail prints and stick my hand into his side, I will never believe it. Notice when the words print of the nails is grouped in a pattern, nails is no longer plural but singular. Take, for example, a garage for three cars, or a three-car garage, as opposed to a garage for cars, or a car garage. Notice the second example is not as specific as the first, as the second may only hold one car. If three or four nails were used to impale him, it simply means his feet or both his hands and feet were separately nailed to the crux simplex torture stake. Noteworthy similarities between the copper serpent and Jesus. Both lifted up in the same manner, on a pole, a stake, or crux simplex. Both sinless and accursed. Both idolized, worshipped, ophiolatry, and christiolatry. Both a corresponding ransom. The copper serpent is to the real serpents as Jesus is to Adam. Both begotten, created or made, and used to save begotten beings, humans, 